guys welcome back it's me crystal sky how are y'all doing today and i hope you're all doing fine during our weather like you are having cold weather or a bad day i hope you're all doing fine and i hope that this video cheers you guys up today we're reading page not page we're on part 10 of our book reading today of Ingo. But before we begin with that, please smash that subscribe and those like buttons and comment something in the comment section and let me know what you guys want to see on this channel. I would really want to know your opinion. Now let's begin. Today we're reading page 65 to 70. Now let's begin. Come on, Sophie. Give me a proper hug. She reaches out for me. I feel bony and awkward. As if I don't fit into her arms anymore. But mom strokes the back of her hand down my cheek and says, Your mom loves you. Just as she did when I was little and suddenly... I feel myself relaxing, melting. You're good children, says mom, so quietly I'm not sure I have heard her right. Stay together. Mind look after one each other. We will, I say. And I mean it. I'm not letting Connor out of my sight today. Will you be alright driving, Mom? The mist's so thick. It will be clearer up on the road, says Mom. There's my good girl. Now. I have got to go or I'm or I will be late. I go up with her to open the gate and shut it again. After she has gone through, the mist is not quite so bad once you're out in it. I can see as far as the wall and the thorn bush limping in the field beyond. Mom has her fog lamp on it, and she drives forward cautiously, gripping the wheel. She hates driving in bad weather. The mist blows in from the sea. It's thick and silent and salty, and the dump of it is all over the gatepost in silvery beads. Mom's terrace crunch over the rough stones and dri drives on up the track. I swing the gate shut, watch the red rear fog lights disappear into the mist, and then tie the tw twine securely around the gate again. There won't be many walkers coming down here today, not in these conditions. It's dangerous on the coast path when the mist is down like this. You could walk straight over the edge of a cliff. You won't go down to the cove today. But for once, I don't mind that. It feels safer inside the cottage. Safer? Why did I say that? The mist whirls dragging wet fingers across my face. I'm going to go back inside and maybe I'll light a fire if we have got any wood left in the shed. 
It's cold when the mist is down. I hurry back inside and there's Connor stabbed on the floor. Connor? I'm not picking up your dirty washing for you. You can put it in the machine yourself. But there is no answer. The cottage is silent. Maybe he has gone up to the farm to get the eggs and potatoes. No, he would have had to go past me. Even in the mist, he w couldn't have gone past without me seeing him. Connor? But this time, I don't shout. I'm asking the empty, famil familiar kitchen to me. To tell me where he is. The radio clock winks. The fridge whirl whirls. They must have seen him go, but they're not telling me. They don't need to go. They don't need to. A cold shiver is creeping over my skin as cold as the mist. I know where Connor's gone. Down the track, through the birkin and fox gloves, down the path and out on to the greasy lip of cliff above the cove. Everything wet and shiny with mist. The rocks hidden, the sea hidden. Down the rocks, between the boulders, on to the rocks. Everything is slippery and dangerous. The sea pulling like a magnet, pulling Connor as it's pulled me. What's the time? The tide will be going out. I remember how the sea swirled around my legs, urging me deeper and deeper. Connor, wait, wait, wait. Don't go without me. Wait, Connor, I'm coming. Chapter 6, you guys. Never go down to the cove alone. Are you listening to me, Sapphire? If Connor isn't with you, you don't go. But mom, Sophie, I want you to promise me that you won't go on your own, ever. It's for your own safety. I can swim just as well as Connor. <clears throat> But you're such a daydreamer, Sophie. If the tide comes in while you're dreaming, I won't be there to help you. So promise. Make Connor promise too. He has it ready. Alright, Mom. I promise. Mom's words from years ago dr drum in my head as I feel my way through the mist, down the track, and along the path. Shapes loom out frighteningly. But when I get close, there are only bushes. The mist has already closed up behind me, dump and woolly and smothering. I can't see any of the cottages. I can't see the track or the gate or even the gap where the path begins. I trip and stumble and scramble up again, rubbing my grazed ankle. Grazed leg, sorry guys. Pobbles rattles under my feet. Wet broken slips my legs. I can hear the sea echoing and the mournful 
sound of the foghorn. Danger, danger, don't come here. But I have a, but I have got to carry on. This is the path to where Connor is. I must follow it. My heart le my heart bumps so hard it feels as if it's up in my mouth. Take a deep breath, Sapphire. There is nothing to be scared of. It's only mist. I creep out onto the grass. I have nearly reached the cliff, but I can't see the edge. The grass is wet and slippery, and I'm afraid of falling. So, I get down on hands and knees, and crawl forward slowly, feeling my way. Ah, says this, yeah. I creep forward, digging my fingers into toss socks of rough grass. I won't go over the edge, whatever happens. Here it is. I lay down on my belly, Lean over and look down below me. Miss Swirls. It's coming in from the sea, thicker and thicker. The shapes of boulders loom beneath like dark heads rearing out of the mist. I can just about find my way down, but the rocks are shining wet. I mustn't slip. I try to remember where the tide will be. It should be low tide just on the turn. I'm safe for now. I let myself down very carefully over the greasy lip of the cliff, scrambling for footholds. You have been down here hundreds of times. It's completely safe. But my heart bangs and sweat prickles under my arms. Climbing down through the mist is like trying to do your best handwriting with your fingers and thick gloves. My left foot breaches a foothold, finds it. I lower my weight gently. No, my foot slips on wet rock and I start to slide. I grab a clump of thrifts and climb, cling on. My fingers want to hold on forever, but I won't let them. Don't be stupid, Sapphire. You won't fall. You can't stay here clinging. Hold on, guys. Oh, found it. Cling onto a cliff. No, no one's going to come and rescue you. And anyway, you have got to find Connor. I take a deep breath. My feet will know where to go if I can just stop panicking. They know where the next foothold is, and the next, and the next. My feet have been learning the way down for years. I take another deep breath. Slowly, slowly, I let go of the cl clamp of drifts. My right foot finds its way down to the next ledge, like a key finding its place in the lock. Down the rocks, squeezed between the boulders, over the stones, the dripping of water sounds eerie in the mist. I can hear the waves breaking far out, but I can't see them. I move as quickly as I can. 
I don't want anyone to hear me coming. At least, at least my foot touch firm, flat sand. I'm down on our beach, safe. My legs are shaking, but I did it. I did it on my own in the midst without Connor. Yeah, you did it on your own. My, my thoughts cheer at me, but don't get too excited. You haven't found Connor yet, have you? I'm going to, I tell myself firmly. And maybe, maybe the mist lifting a little. I can just about see the edge of the t tumble of rocks. That means the sand. That meets the sand. The cliff I climbed down has vanished back into white wilderness, but I can't get lost. When I want to go home, all I have to do is walk. All right, guys, that was our other reading. There was a few mistakes while I was reading through the chapter here and there. But either way, I hope you have enjoyed today's page. I say do hope that you guys enjoyed today's page reading. And I hope you guys stay tuned for my next reading because I would really like to see you in my next one as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's 65, page 65 to 70. And I hope you guys will be coming back for more for our next reading of this wonderful book. And just an update for you guys. Um, I will be reading book two, which is called... Hold on, guys. I have it right beside me. Which is called The Inigo Chronicles, The Tide Knot. That's the second book of the first book, which I'm reading right now. I will be posting that as when I finish this. This will take us a while to finish, but once we eventually do end up finishing this book, whenever that occurs, I will be reading our second book and then our final third book. There is four books in total, but I have heard from some reviews, guys, that the fourth book is actually doesn't relate around any of the characters that you're hearing about now, so I will not be getting or reading that one. I'm going to be only reading Ingo by Helen de Moore, the first one, guys. The second, which is Ingo the Tide Knot. And the last one, which is Crossing Ingo. And they're all made by Helen de Moore. I don't know her personally, guys. Unfortunately, I wish I did because she is honestly amazing. This is the best book about mermaids that I have read through my lifetime. But go check out her other books, guys. I'm pretty sure they're just amazing as what well, we're reading now. And I hope to see you guys next time. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And like I said, I'll see you guys next time. I love you all. Bye, guys.